What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today in this video guys, we're going to make it short, sweet, and simple. I just want to talk about some concepts in DeFi and a couple things you guys need to understand. Where does the yield come from? Guys, knowing where the yield comes from is super important and that will allow you to make your plays accordingly. As you can see here on Wonderland, we have 85,000% APY on Olympus. Well, this is Olympus Pro on Olympus Dow. We got about no, I don't need to show it to you. It's about 8,000%. Here's another protocol. This one is about 1.2 million or 1.282 million percent APY. And I know you're asking yourself, you're like, what the snap is going on? Well, basically what this means is if you put a dollar into this protocol, literally $1 at the end of the year, if everything stays the same, you will end up with $1.282 million. Now you're like, how the snap is that possible? Well, it's most likely like 99.9999999999999. Might as well just call it 100% not possible. Why is that? Let me explain to you where this yield comes from. Most of these farms are Ponzi farms. I'm not calling all of them pon Ponzi's, but if it walks like a Ponzi, it talks like a Ponzi, it's probably a Ponzi. So where does the yield come from? That's what you need to know. So with these tokenomics, how they work is this. When you're distributing tokens, you are giving them to the user or whoever uses the protocol. And now what happens is me, you, whatever, if we dump the coin, that is going to dump the price. Same thing with green button. That means you pump the price because green goes up, red moves down, green buy, red sell. <laughs> Anyways, you guys get the point. So where is this yield coming from? Well, when you deposit into that protocol, there are some farms that say, hey, we got a 4% deposit fee, or hey, we got a 3% deposit fee. So that's where that coin inflation is going. If they have a, all the tokens already released out there, that deposit fee can go back to buy the coin and give it and redistribute it to the users. That There are some coins like that. Um, some, something similar to it is like SafeMoon. SafeMoon, all the coins are released, and basically what happens is when as people buy and sell they're taxed on the transactions and they're given to people now you have something that is a mix between that are simple yield farms that have no cap supply they are just infinitely minted and how do how do you get tokens like that to be valued or where does the yield come from well the yield is denominated in the ponzi token so the reason why whenever you see a farm pop up it gives like two three four maybe even 500,000% APY and you're like, what the snap? What am I doing? I need to get in. Uh, take it easy, bro. Chill, like take a chill pill. Like, come on. The reason why those APYs are so high is because it's artificial. Now, there, again, the APYs are priced in the token. So say you deposit $1,000 into that pool and say that token pumps from $1 to $10. That APY now 10 X's because that pool amount of token, the amount of tokens in that pool are still given into that pool, regardless of if the token's $1 or $10. So let me give you a better example of this. Say the protocol says, all right, we're making this pool have 10 tokens in it. If you want one, you deposit it into the pool. So I'm like, all right, I want to deposit it. I'm first one in. So I deposit $10 in. I'm the only one in that pool. I get all 10 of those tokens and say the tokens are worth a dollar a piece, I get 10 bucks, 10 bucks per day or per block, whatever they want. Awesome, I'm so happy. But now everyone's like, or I'm, I'm like on Twitter, bro, I'm like pumping my games, I'm doing so good, I'm like printing dough. And then they're like, what the snap, what's this dough? And then you're like, yeah, it's over here. And then they come to loot your farm. But what's interesting is the APYs still stay the same. Why is that? Or sometimes they even go up. Well, it's because that user or that guy or that girl are actually buying the coins now, which causes the price to pump up and they're depositing into that vault. So 
in turn, you're actually getting less tokens, but it's a higher APY because the price is now higher for it. So it's kind of like you really don't want people jumping into your farm. It's actually better to find really, really good farms or really, really good protocols that you can stock up on the coins. Yes, the APYs may look low at first, but that's in the coin price. That's not in the coin itself. So you can be like a Titan millionaire or whatever. Yeah, I, I say that because it, it's, it, it's good times, uh, good days. But anyways, it's priced in the token. So the reason why that yield is there is because there's demand to buy. Now, when those APYs or APRs drop or they're higher elsewhere, people dump the coin and they move on. And what happens when you move on? Well, the APYs dump. And then what happens when the APYs dump? You move on. And then what happens when you move on? Well, it kills the yields, kills the uh, APYs, it kills the, well, price of the token. Everyone leaves. Then the farm dies. That's where that yield comes from. Now they also have a mix of one that also has deposit fees and withdrawal fees. So this is trying to cause the farm to sustain longer. Yes, there are farms that do this, but hey, it is what it is. That's where the yield is coming from. Now we're going to talk about Olympus Dow or with Wonderland. Where's their yield coming from? Well, in my opinion, what they're trying to do, the reason why you give a very high yield is to incentivize more people to put bonds in your protocol. But instead of renting liquidity, which is what most protocols do, they're actually owning this liquidity. So can they sustain these APYs? Now you're like, what the snap? This guy's lost his mind. How in the world are they going to sustain those APYs? Well, I'm not saying they're going to sustain that high, nor can they possibly keep them. I don't know. We'll see. But in my opinion, with the assets that they're getting, they're actually owning them. The reason I say this is from experience. So in real estate, you do not like renting a house is almost like a, I wouldn't call it a sin, um, but it, it's just it's painful. Like you don't really I, I, I don't see myself renting a house. The reason why is because you constantly have to make those payments. But if you own the house free and clear, da, 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 that's a lot of fun. You guys get the point. They're owning the liquidity. So they're actually trading their token for your LP tokens. So instead of you depositing your LP tokens to earn their coin, you are technically buying them with your LP tokens. But what they do with their LP tokens or yours is, and now they're theirs, is they're actually using them in DeFi and they're actually earning a portion of the fees, you know, like the swap fees, because now they own the tokens. So that is somewhat how they are able to sustain it. Now, the problem with all these own forks is you are seeing them literally go to the moon. They're going up too hard, too fast. I'm not saying they can't all make it, or I'm not saying there won't be a couple of them that make it, but the TLDR is you need to have a strong community with these guys, even with all the farms. I go to say, where does the yield come from? Because if you don't understand where the yield is coming from, you are going to be the yield. What do I mean by that? You're going to be the bag holder and then people are going to dump on you. The reason why I say that and the reason why I know that is because I was the bag holder. I was like, we're going to the moon. We go, oh, let me, no, don't do that joke. It's, it's trash. Don't do that stuff, please. Especially when you go into a Telegram chat and all you see is just like memes of like on the moon, Mars, wow, like the random guys, you know what I'm talking about. That's when you need to get scared, like immediately. If you see that and your coin is up, sell it. Now, thank me later. Um, of course, it's not financial advice, but the point is, is look for communities. So let's take, for example, Olympus Tech. They have the Omi community. It is a really strong community. Uh, like, no joke. Like, it is really, really strong. That's what you look for. Ethereum. Super strong community. I'm going to say it now. I know. Hex. Really, really strong community. There are a couple things about Hex I'm not going to talk about. But anyways, you guys get the point. And, dude, the next one is Wonderland. Danny, that community, Land of the Frogs, what the snap. Guys, you gotta look for communities in these things. Communities is the biggest thing to look for. So again, let's rephrase this. If you don't know where the yield is coming from, you are the yield. It's okay if you're the yield, 
you just got to understand if you are in profit, take it because you are not always going to keep it. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed Mike Talk. And let's go ahead and leave you guys with a wisdom one liner. We're in Proverbs chapter 14, verses 6. No, 7. Stay away from a fool, for you will not find knowledge on their lips. Okay, sounds good to me. Y'all guys can also catch me on tweeters. Uh, it's at rent a home fast. Like literally, at rent a home fast.